In this video, I'm going to talk about three ways that the digital SAT is changing the game from the paper SAT. Some of it's hard and some of it is so easy it feels like cheating. One of the reasons that I am privy to knowing how the digital SAT is changing is that I have been diving deep into the pond of digital SAT lately because we are launching a digital SAT course soon on SuperTutor TV. And we're hoping that it's gonna be a useful tool if you're self-studying and you're looking for material and you don't wanna just work from a book because you know you're going to have to work from a screen on test day. It's gonna be practice material. It's like as if you bought six books to prep for the SAT and they're all online. And we are now offering a free upgrade to the digital course when it arrives for those who buy our paper SAT course. So if you're gonna be flipping or switching tests, you can go ahead and subscribe and not worry. SuperTutorTV.com slash subscribe. So let's talk about this. Number one, first thing that's different, vocabulary is back, baby. We used to see vocabulary on the SAT way back in the yonder days of when I was in high school. There used to be something called sentence completions. And those sentence completions, you'd have to fill in with a vocabulary word. So this is a little bit different from how those sentence completions looked. We're still dealing with vocabulary, but what makes the questions really hard is not the words themselves. So I'm gonna show you guys an example. Given that the conditions in binary star systems should make planetary formation nearly impossible, it's not surprising that the existence of planets in such systems has lacked blank explanation. So I'm gonna come up with my perfect word first and then I'm gonna keep reading to make sure I didn't screw anything up. Um, I would say lacked any explanation, right? Has lacked any explanation at all, right? So any explanations are gonna be like far-fetched and weird and crazy, right? Roman Rafikov and Kendrin Silsby shed light on the subject when they use modeling to determine a complex set of factors that could support planet's development. So um, these guys are shedding light on the idea that we have no idea what the heck is going on and there's not a good explanation. So that's my perfect answer. And then I can go through. We have there's no discernible explanation. Oh, that's OK. There is not a straightforward explanation. That's OK, too. There's not an inconclusive explanation. That's a double negative and it's not close to good. Like inconclusive isn't close to good or any. So I'm gonna get rid of it or unbiased. And bias is an idea that like mm, the people who came up with it are biased and they have an agenda. It's just kind of weird. So we get through to those pretty quickly. But as you can see, this isn't about just knowing what the word discernible means. Um, so discernible means that you can make it out, right? Like his writing wasn't very discernible, right? There were no discernible clues that the scientists could find, right? Something like that. The issue I don't think it's is that the explanations that exist are confusing. It's just that we don't really have a lot of explanations, right? Because the conditions make it nearly impossible. Like I don't have a lot to go on. I have no good explanations. So that's what my gut goes on. Now a straightforward explanation, yeah. It would make sense that if it's nearly impossible for this to be true, the only way I can explain it is in some way that's like roundabout crazy and weird, right? So just going off this straightforward seems to be a little bit better than discernible. Again, discernible works. It's not wrong. And the idea that it's complex versus straightforward, there's a little bit of more interaction and play there than maybe between complex and discernible. Like the idea that I can't make it out or I can't understand it, it's too erudite or something. But as you can see, what makes this hard is not the word discernible. It's the context. It's the vibe of the passage. And it is a really hard question, but get ready. That's what's coming for you in the SAT. Okay. Second thing, this is a really weird little thing, is that they're suddenly testing whether and is an appropriate word to use or not. So in past iterations of the SAT, they were usually just testing whether and grammatically was correct or not, but now they're testing whether and is the right word to use. So let's look at a question really quickly. The intense pressure found in the deep ocean can affect the structure of proteins in fish cells, destroying the protein's shape. The chemical TMAO counters this effect, ensuring that proteins retain their original configurations. TMAO is found in high concentrations in the cells of the deepest dwelling fish. So I know that C is a run-on and B is a run-on, but A and D are grammatically correct. But I can't just be looking at the grammatical correctness, right? Like this has period and then capital letter. So I have like subject, verb, object, what I need, right? Subject, verb, object, what I need. But I also have to think about what does this and mean when I put it in? If I put this and here, here's what it means. Ensuring that so TMAO counters the effect of the chemical. So TMAO counters the distortion effect, ensuring that proteins retain their, their original configurations. 
If we put and TMAO is found in high concentrations, that means TMAO ensures that TMAO is found in high concentrations, right? The insuring would have to distribute, so to speak, to both of those ideas. And TMAO isn't ensuring that itself is found in high concentrations in fish. That doesn't make any sense. It's not logical. Right? So these two things aren't parallel and ensuring can't distribute to both of them. And so this and creates kind of a train wreck of confusion. And I see that happening that you have to know is the and being used correctly? Does the however mean the right thing when the comma is here versus when the comma is here? You've got to actually be looking at meaning and plugging into meaning. So that's a little bit new. It's coming out in ways that I haven't seen it before. So keep your eye out not just for the grammar, but also for the meaning. The old test used to do it a lot with context. So that's how they kind of complicated it beyond just the grammar as they wanted to know meaning, but it was like across um, sentences. And here it's within the sentence. Like how is that and functioning in the sentence? So it's interesting how they've sort of pivoted, but that's new, so beware. Third point is you can desmos the crap out of anything in the math section. Um, you have full reign of Desmos, and this is totally different from the no calculator section on the current SAT. The current SAT was really big on making sure that you knew your math and you couldn't just like hack your way through with a calculator. That's not fair, is it? Um, well, there are questions on this version of the SAT that are stupid easy with Desmos. Here, I'll try to find one for you guys. Spoiler alert, this is a question from practice test two. So Desmos, here's a couple of examples. You can see here, here's a system of equations. So we can just graph the two, and then you literally can just zoom in on their point of intersection. If I do that, I can just verify that it's on both. So you can see how I can just do this super fast, super easy, and then subtract them from each other. And there's lots of other questions too where you can just solve it by graphing. So Desmos, very powerful tool, and there's lots more hacks with Desmos. Maybe I'll get into some of those in future videos, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. I hope you guys like this video, so please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. I'm over on TikTok. We're releasing a couple of videos on TikTok a week right now. So if you're on TikTok, make sure you add us, SuperTutor TV. We're also teaching some live digital SAT classes this summer. You can sign up for those at supertutortv.com and then click on SAT courses. We'd love to see you in one of our live digital SAT courses, or again, on our digital self-study, self-paced course. Throw out your books, throw out your pencils, except to do scratch paper work on the math. The new prep world is coming to you. And whether you're self-studying, whether you're working with a tutor, or whether you want to do a self-paced kind of self-guided tour of the SAT, we're gonna have the tool for you guys. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all soon. Take care, bye-bye.